This video is about renal osteodystrophy. These are the references for this video. At the end of this lecture, the first year MBBS student should be able to define renal osteodystrophy, describe manifestation and types of renal osteodystrophy and describe the mechanisms of renal osteodystrophy. The schema for the categorization of the diseases in the bone is based on the involvement of various pathways or processes that are involved in bone homeostasis. Uh, one factor is the defect in nuclear protein and transcription factor while there are another head and uh, one is the defect in hormone and signal transduction mechanism then there are defects in extracellular structural protein and uh, the commonest among these uh, rare disorders is type 1 collagen disease that is also termed as osteogenesis imperfecta and uh, then there are other types of the diseases are also there uh, which the other groups are the diseases that are associated with defects in metabolic pathways enzyme ion channels and transporters and the commonest and the important one among these is osteopetrosis or marble bone disease the diseases that are associated with decreased bone mass is osteoporosis that is characterized by presence of spongy and soft bone and uh, with decreased bone mass then there are diseases that are caused by osteoclast dysfunction the renal osteodystrophy are the morphological alteration in the bone in the presence of chronic renal disease these also encompass the changes that are associated with dialysis the manifestation of renal osteodystrophy are osteopenia or osteoporosis that is decreased bone mass or osteomalacia that is impairment in the bone mineralization secondary hypo hyperparathyroidism and growth retardation are other manifestations the histological bone changes in end stage renal disease can be categorized as high turnover uh, or dynamic osteodystrophy low turnover or adynamic osteodystrophy and mixed pattern disease in high turnover uh, osteodystrophy the resorption of the bone predominates while in the low turnover disease uh, it there is little osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity in the mixed pattern there are areas of low turnover and high turnover present the low turnover osteodystrophy or a dynamic bone disease is seen in 40% of people undergoing hemodialysis and 50% of those who are treated by peritoneal dialysis so there is tubular dysfunction that result in the renal tubular acidosis and the systemic acidosis uh, will lead to dissolution of hydroxyapatite and finally matrix demineralization occurs and result in osteomalacia in addition to uh, hyperparathyroidism there is decreased biosynthetic activity and uh, there is decreased conversion of vitamin d into its active form that is uh, vitamin d3 that will result in hypocalcemia and further add to hyperparathyroidism there is a mechanism for calcium and phosphate homeostasis between kidney and the bone that includes bone morphogenic protein 7 fibroblast growth factor 23 and clotho that is a membrane protein the bmp7 or bone morphogenic protein 7 is produced by renal tubules and induces osteoblastic differentiation and proliferation while the fibroblast growth factor 23 is made by osteocyte and it acts on the renal tubules tubular cells uh, and regulate clotho dependent renal uh, phosphate homeostasis and hydroxylation of vitamin D so there is decreased clotho and decreased bone morphogenic protein 7 and this is the basic reason for the hyperphosphatemia 
impairment of this feedback loop will result in osteopenia and osteomalacia this flow diagram is showing the pathogenesis of manifestation of chronic renal disease when there is decreased uh, renal phosphate excretion there is hyperphosphatemia and this hyperphosphatemia uh, will lead to decreased serum calcium level when the serum calcium level is decreased that is sensed by parathyroid hormone as the parathyroid uh, gland is the sensor of the, the serum calcium level and uh, this uh, result in secretion of parathyroid hormone and uh, result in hyperparathyroidism this hyperparathyroidism will lead to development of osteitis fibrosa cystica or secondary hyperparathyroidism on the other hand the hyperphosphatemia will result in increased product of calcium and phosphate and it goes above 70 this will result in metastatic calcification the metabolic acidosis will lead to development of osteoporosis and the decreased conversion of cholecalciferol into its active form is decreased in chronic renal failure so due to this there is decreased absorption of calcium from intestine that will result in decreased serum calcium level on the other hand aluminium compensate for this an abnormal deposition of the aluminium originating from uh, dialysis fluid will result in osteomalacia in addition to this accumulation uh, there is accumulation of beta 2 microglobulin amyloid that will lead to development of amyloidosis and uh, the biochemical picture of the renal osteodystrophy will be increased phosphate decreased calcium increased serum alkaline phosphatase increased parathyroid hormone and serum 25 hydroxy vitamin d will be normal within normal limits so keeping in mind the pathogenetic event the management of the renal osteodystrophy revolves around treatment of renal failure control of the phosphate level by appropriate drug, drug therapy and infusions occasionally parathyroidectomy is also performed and uh, the vitamin d is administered